Hi everyone and welcome to part one of a four part tutorial that will be exclusive to Patreon except that this very first part which is the theory section will be made available publicly and that's just to give people out there a bit of an insight into the sort of stuff we look at on Patreon. So in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about a subject that I harp on about almost as much as shape and tone and that is soft shadows and hard lights. So this shorter video is part one and this is the theory section. After that there will be three practical applications of the theory in the form of three full length real time paintings that are fully narrated, one watercolour, one oil and one acrylic. Those are only going to be available over on my Patreon teaching channel. If you hop over there you can look at everything I've got. The best tier or the best value for money I think is kind of the, uh, the gateway tier where you get quick tips videos. Uh, commentated time lapses and the odd full length painting and then the next tier up the tutorial tier is designed for people who really want to get stuck into their painting and take it to the next level and that includes these every six weeks or so a very in-depth very um, very detailed tutorial the last one was watercolor mixing and we've had all sorts of different ones since then so as I said please hop over to patreon to check that out and as always depending on what platform you're watching this please feel free to share this with anyone you may think will be interested and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so let's have a look so back to soft shadows and hard lights as always, these are ideas and principles that can be highly effective when used in your work, but they are not hard, fast rules. I found them to be incredibly useful, but you don't have to rigidly stick to this. For me, it's just a start point from which to play, experiment and grow. So to understand these or, or look at these a bit deeper, we need to look at what these are and what do we mean by them why and where do they occur so that we have a deeper understanding and then how as painters we can use them to create more drama and atmosphere realism um, and ultimately more interesting and engaging artworks so number one what are they um, for me when we talk about soft edges it's fairly obvious we mean fuzziness uh, a lack of detail slightly blurry uh, you could also call it more general, less specific, or even call it out of focus, anything in that kind of ballpark. And by hard edges, I kind of mean more definition, stronger, sharper edges, often more detail. Uh, you could also call it more stated or more in focus. So if we look at this first image of a rice paddy, which I painted in watercolour, this is an easy to understand contrast between soft and hard. And obviously there's more subtle um, variations, um, but for this let's keep it simple, just kind of soft and hard edges. So in this painting, the distance, as you would expect in the real world and as we do in paintings, the distant area is much softer, it's fuzzier, it's more hazy, and we, we're seeing far less detail, so it's much more general. Whereas the foreground, and to some extent the middle ground, um, is much sharper, it's more defined and it's more in focus. Plus there's more detail or more specific areas. And so this gives the impression of a sense of distance and depth. And this is something we see in the real world anyway, things get f f uh, kind of blurrier and fuzzier the further they get away obviously, and they get sharper and more defined as they come forward, but we can use this principle in many different ways in art. We can use it also to draw attention to a focal point, make that slightly sharper uh, and to leave other areas slightly fuzzier to draw attention away from them. But more specifically for this tutorial I want to talk about how we can use this exact same principle in shadow and light areas of a painting. And so for me this will not only make your work more interesting, but strangely, whatever style you paint in, it will also make your work realistic. So by that I don't mean photorealistic or anything like that, I just mean it will have a better sense of realism to it. And that doesn't necessarily come from more detail, it doesn't necessarily come from fancy techniques, although it can come from both of those things. But for me it simply comes from an artistic understanding of the natural world and then how to interpret that through good observation, basically what it boils down to. So this idea of hard lights and, and soft shadows, as I said, isn't something you have to stick to strictly, but it's a good place to start. And if you were to always adhere to this for the rest of your life as an artist, um, it would take you a long, long way with your painting, and it's a great place to start. 
So to summarise, I would say we can think of the light as literally describing what is happening in a given area, uh, and therefore the details are more stated, whereas the shadows, things are more suggested, things are indicated with more of a hint of what's going on, uh, and the shadows therefore can feel a little bit more atmospheric and a little bit more mysterious. And that's all fine, but we need to understand why that's happening if we truly want to use this well. So we need to take a look at a couple of examples. So hard edges occur where there is direct light. Uh, and this could be the sun or a man-made light source, but the point is that any area that is directly lit by the light source is going to give us much higher proportion of hard edges. The light here is hitting the subject directly. The clue is in the name, direct light. So it's very strong and therefore it fully illuminates the subject. It shows all the detail of the area being lit and it creates those sharper, harder edges. Uh, and like I said, you could call this sharp focus. As we drift into the shadows, the shadows are not being hit by the direct light. By their very definition, they're in shadow from the direct light. If there was no light at all, then these shadows would appear simply black. However, we know full well, when we look at shadows, that they are not just black. They might have very dark recesses within them that might appear to be completely void of light and therefore black. But actually, in reality, shadows are not only full of many different tones, but we can actually still see things and some details in the shadows, along with plenty of lovely colours and little variations of tone. And this happens because light bounces around. So the direct light bounces off everything that's around the object, say, and then it bounces back into the shadows. And this is what's called ambient light. So the shadow areas are lit by ambient light as opposed to the direct light. You might have also heard this as bounced light or reflected light. Again, it's all in the same kind of ballpark. So every time the light hits something and bounce off, bounces off it or reflects off something, it actually loses power or it loses intensity. So by the time the light has bounced off all these different surfaces and into the shadow area that you're looking at, the light itself is going to be much, much weaker than the original light source, the direct light. Therefore, this weaker ambient light that we find in the shadows only slightly illuminates things and it only slightly describes things because it's much weaker. And that's why we see partial detail. It's why we see softer edges. Uh, and sometimes we simply get the merest hint of what is actually in the shadow. So another example is this charcoal piece I did of a coastal scene. So in this first photo, the orange outline um, is what I would deem to be the most prominent light areas. And whilst there are some softer tones and edges in there, I very purposely, as the artist, made many very, very sharp and hard edges of bright, direct light hitting things. And as a result, this describes the form of the rock in a very defined way um, it kind of really tells us what's going on in there. And now if we look at photo two, the areas outlined in blue show the most dominant shadow areas, or the areas now we know to be called the ambient light. And within these areas, as an artist, I have purposely created more fuzzy, soft edges, less detail, and there's more subtle variations of tone and form. It's not so stated. And now finally, if we look at this in context of the finished piece, um, whilst this idea of hard lights and soft shadows might seem quite subtle, it's still very obvious in this piece. And for me, it creates a lovely feeling of depth and atmosphere. It gives a sense of realism, though it's not a realistic drawing per se. And to my eye, it's much more interesting and engaging for the viewer when everything in an image is not rendered to the same level of detail all over. And of course, there's plenty of other areas like the sea and the sky where we can kind of make it up a bit as we go and just play around and see what feels right. Um, plus, we also have the inclusion of soft edges created by, uh, you know, sea spray and general atmospherics, which is less to do with light and shadow and more to do with uh, other principles, which we'll look at in a different tutorial. But basically, very simply, the soft shadows were created from the ambient light and they are in contrast to the hard edges and the hard light areas that are created by the direct light and that's a great place to start.
And so I wanted to give one last example. Um, so that's kind of the what's and the where's and the why's. But let's look at, um, as I said, another example, plus a couple of little hows as artists, we can, we can push this idea and how we use this principle uh, to go much more in depth and then in, in the future three paintings that I'm going to do. So like I said, as a painter, we can push these ideas much further than maybe they are in reality. And this is to make a really strong statement in our artwork or to really enhance our painting um, or to enhance our subject. You can even create and make up variations of edges that aren't actually in your subject at all. Again, when we have a better understanding of reality, we can then alter the reality of our painting to make more of a statement in line with what we want to do. And so if you have a better understanding of what they are, where they are and why these variations in edges and definition occur, then this actually becomes much easier. Um, and it becomes much easier to see in the first place because we know what to look for and then it becomes much easier to create our own when we need to. So in this watercolour of the hornbill, the light area is pretty simple. It's effectively the white with a high contrast sharp edge against the background, which also note is quite a soft blurry background to create contrast with the sharp details of the bird. Uh, and this is a fairly also sharp edge between the white in shadow, which is the kind of bluey colour here, and the white in light. Um, and that's drifting into a different subject, which is form shadows and cast shadows, which I'll, I'll touch on in another tutorial. But basically, so the, the light area is fairly easy to understand. It's also illuminating the side of the beak. And to some extent, the hard, sharp lights or highlights on the eye and the surrounding area. But then the ambient light of the shadow area, for me, is actually much more interesting. So within this large area of shadow, we move between various different parts of the bird. And within that, we have tonal changes and colour changes. So notice how the transition between these different areas is purposely soft. Um, in this case, in watercolour, it's done wet into wet, or, or in this case, it's more damp into damp, and therefore we get these softer, fuzzier edges between colours or between tonal variations or between different parts of the bird in this case. The most obvious area is the dark wing on the right hand side and how it softly melts and moves into the blue colours of the body or the white of the body in shadow. So the tone changes and the colour changes within the white shadow are also much more subtle and gentle than in the light areas. And it's this sort of thing that you can push much further as a painting. And in actual fact, for me, this painting is quite reserved in this sense. I could have worked much more wet into wet than I did. I could have let all the colours in the shadow area, all of the tones melt together a lot more. And this still would have made sense and it would have read correctly from a visual point of view because, or as long as I had, the sharp definition and detail of the light area. So again, it's that contrast of sharp light detail and as far as you can bear to push those softer, fuzzier edges. And so that's basically it, guys. It's kind of lecture over. Uh, the videos of the practical application of this theory uh, are going to be great fun. I can't wait to get stuck into those. And we're going to look at it, as I said, in acrylic, watercolour and oil because we approach it all slightly differently. But just to summarise, whilst the light and the shadow are um, equally important because without one, the other doesn't exist, the light is often where the majority of the action is happening. It's kind of the main event. Whereas the shadow areas, whilst very important, are what I would call the supporting act. Um, if both the light and the shadow are uh, shouting at the same volume in terms of detail, in terms of colour intensity maybe, um, and or are too similar in overall tone, then they kind of compete for our attention, um, which is kind of confusing to the viewer. And it also creates a flatter, le less dramatic artwork. So we don't necessarily need to have extreme tonal contrast between um, those. However, strong defined patterns of light and shadow, when combined with a light that is allowed to really speak out with some gentle support from the shadows, this will give much more impact and drama to a piece.
um, and it will also be much more likely to be a successful and engaging piece of art in the end. So that's it guys, don't forget you can hop over to my Patreon channel to see what else I have on offer, loads of other tutorials, lots of different tiers for whatever you want to get into, um, and I shall catch you in the next video.